What is up, YouTube? It is your boy Never Go Living back with another PO to pick our video. And today we're gonna be having two dates for you guys. We're gonna be finishing off this event date, and we'll go ahead and do the next uh Carmen date for y'all. Um, so real quick, guys, before we get started, make sure if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Make sure to leave a like on the video if you did enjoy, and subscribe so you never. No, I already said it. subscribe. Leave a comment. Leave a comment so you never or no. So you tell me what you want to see. I'm all over the whack. Sorry, but I wanted to get this video out for you guys. So let's get into it. You're with Haley in the back of her ghost, ghost hunting van going over her equipment. You've accompanied her on a job in lieu of her usual partner, Zeke. The van is parked on the street outside of a, a sleepy suburban home. All right, EMF reader. You look through her equipment for the objects in question. Which one was that? Again, got it. Got it. You hand Haley the EMF reader, which she pockets. Good. Ultraviolet light. That's the one we picked up from Zeke, that damn traitor. Check. Perfect. Can it here, please? You do as she asks. If I carry this, can you take in the flashlight and remote microphone? Sure thing. Thanks, dude. You find and pick up the object she requested. Okay, we should be good to go. Any questions before you head inside? This will be your first hunt, after all. Oh, excuse me. Um... Will we really see a ghost? Am I going to get possessed? Will we really see a ghost? No clue. There's always a chance. But honestly, I've never seen a ghost with my own two eyes. Just the secondary effects of their presence. That's kind of a relief, but you're sure they exist. Let's see. But you're sure they exist? As sure as the sky is blue. I used to be frustrated that people didn't believe in them. But then I realized something. If ghosts were easy to find, I'd be out of a job. So I learned to live with the skepticism. Haha. <laughs> Is the pay good? Eh, not really. A job like this typically nets me about a couple thousand. That's good money. A couple thousand, how I don't sound too surprised. Ghost hunters tend to be freelancers, not salary workers. Sometimes jobs are few and far between. We still got to make rent, right? <laughs> You're scamming these people. <laughs> hey, low key, though. It's way more lucrative than I expected. Not bad, right? Still, that's not the way... That's not to say that Zeke was wrong. The nature of the work means we might go a month or two without a job. If you're looking for financial stability, this ain't the line of work for you. Haley opens the back of her van to the cool night air. But it is for me. Let's roll. You follow Haley to the house's front door. She pulls out a key and unlocks it. Did the homeowner give you that? Yep, otherwise I'd have to break in. I don't think anyone wants that. Awfully trusting of them. You've got to be a trusting person to have someone alone in your house. Trusting or desperate for some peace of mind. Where are the owners? Experience tells me they're probably staying in a hotel nearby. We've got one night to get this done, so let's get to it. The two of you enter the house. First things first, let's set up the remote microphone. It'll let, let us listen for paranormal sounds from the van later. You take a few minutes to set up the mic in the foyer. According to the owners, there's a few problem spots. Here are the upstairs closet and the master bedroom. Let's get to work then. That's the spirit. Let's hunt some spooks. We can check on the foyer later through the mic. So let's head upstairs and see what we can find. The upstairs creak forebodingly as you ascend them. The stairs creak forebodingly as you ascend them. Closest thing should be a closet should be a right around here. Haley stops in front of the closet. The door is ajar. What did they say the problem was? They reported the closet door opening itself after they shut it. Haley waves her UV wand over the door. The ultraviolet light reveals a smeared handprint on its surface. Look at that. We've got prints. Maybe a family member. Whoa, as in a ghost prints? Could be. Could also just be human prints that haven't faded yet. Unless I watch the fingerprints appear, I'm not convinced. Haley nudges the door shut with her elbow to avoid leaving prints. Let's see what happens, shall we? Wait. The two of you wait in silence for a few minutes, staring at the closet. Just as you start to get fidgety, the door slowly creaks open by itself. Any ideas on why that happened? A few. Gotta test something first, though. Haley waves the ultraviolet wand over the door again. No new prints. I may have a theory. She leans the light against the wall and inspects the door's hinges. Aha, I thought so. <laughs> Ghost in the hinges. Find something? Yep, the door isn't hung right. The hinges slant, slant slightly forward. Give it enough time or enough stomping around, the thing will swing right open. Ah, so there was a rational explanation. Again, there usually is. At least now they know to get a repairman in. I basically saved them the money of a consultation. Haley laughs until she snorts. I crack myself up. All right, the bedroom is next. You enter the master bedroom. Haley pulls out the MF reader and starts a sweep. 
What was the bedroom's problem? Could cold spot at the foot of the bed. One of those pesky phenomena that could have a million explanations. More often than not, an unearthly chill is just a poorly fitted window. She sweeps the EMF over the window. It beeps. Huh? Do windows give off electromagnetic fields? Not usually. You check the foot of the bed. I'll keep scanning. You go stand by the foot of the bed. It is noticeably colder than the surrounding area. I see what they meant. It's really cold over there? Weird. Haley inspects the edges of the window frame. No air should be getting through here. Don't think this window is our culprit. Maybe an actual ghost? I'll look around for causes. I'll look around for potential causes of the cold spot. Good idea. Try to eliminate as many possibilities as well possible. You notice the cold spot seems to have a slight breeze to it. One of the that emanates from beneath the bed. Check under the bed. You crawl under the bed in search of the breeze's source. It's dark down there, but your finger hits what feels like a metal grill. You determine it to be an air conditioning vent. Haley's EMF reader beeps again. Aha, it wasn't the window that was beeping, it was the alarm clock. Any plugged in appliance will give off a tiny amount of EMF, even if it's switched off. False positive, after all. I think I found something. It goes something or a mundane something. Either way, I'm on my... Are you under the bed? Yes, yes I am. Ha, uh, alright, make room. You shuffle over so that Haley can crawl under the bed as well. What are we looking at? I think this is the source. Haley feels around for the van and finds it with her fingers. Yep, that's cold air, alright. They must have forgotten they put their bed over the vent. All the cold air was forced out to the bottom, leaving a chilly spot. Haley turns her head to face you. Great job. Another room marked goes free. She awkwardly shifts until her hand is up for a high five. High five, Haley. You try to bring your arm up, but it's too cramped beneath the bed. No dice, huh? Hmm. All right, how about this? Haley leans forward and presses her lips to yours. Sorry if I'm going kind of fast. The, the event dates take really, really long, so I'm not trying to have a video too long. Um, so I'm trying to read through this a little bit faster, but uh, yeah, Haley leans forward and presses her lips to yours. There we go. That's a suitable way to celebrate, right? Let's try again just to be sure. It is in my books. Mine too. I'm glad we're on the same page. You kiss Haley back and feel her smile against your lips. Eventually, she pulls back for air. Phew. All right. We should probably crawl out from under the bed. The longer we stay down here, the more I feel like some kind of boogeyman. The two of you laugh, crawl out, and return to the hallway. Haley collects the UV lamp from where she leaned it against the wall. That's everything but the foyer accounted for. Now we just need to head back to the van and listen through the... Haley stops at the top of the stairs. Haley, what's wrong? It's it's stupid. Is it a ghost? No, no, nothing like that. Just Haley's eyes are locked on the bottom of the stairs. Last time when I got hurt in the job. It's because I fell down some stairs. Ouch, did you trip? No, I was... Haley seems somehow sheepish. I know it sounds crazy, but I felt something push me. <laughs> Maybe Zeke did it? That would be so effed up. Oh my god, that's horrible. Yeah, you're telling me. Zeke was already in the van. We were taking all the equipment back out. I went to bring the last of it downstairs, and Haley is still staring down the staircase. She doesn't finish her sentence. Something pushed you down? Haley nods. And now, I don't know, every time I go to descend some stairs, I feel... She gestures vaguely to illustrate her point. Doom and danger somehow. My apartment building has elevators, so it's not every day, but... Haley rubs her elbows subconsciously. I realize how stupid this sounds. Offer your arm. Haley gratefully takes your arm. Thanks, man. Means a lot. She kisses you on the cheek and the two of you descend. You return to the van to listen for paranormal sounds through the foyer mic. After ten minutes of listening through headphones, nothing has occurred. Right, I think it's safe to call it. I'll tell the owners what we found, which is to say, nothing. A job well done. Yep, maybe a bit of an anticlimactic result, but that's the way of things. Rarely is a haunted location actually haunted. But trust me, it's better that way. Haley stretch, stretches her back. Okay, I'll go grab the remote microphone. You stay here just in case some idiot kids try to slash my tires or something. Ma'am, yes ma'am. Haha, <laughs> we're basically off the job now, so no need for that. Not that I don't enjoy it. She wings at you. Okay, be right back. Haley exits the van and begins the long walk down the driveway. Shortly after she leaves, the mic's input indicator light flicks. It's picking up a sound. Haley, Haley is only halfway there. Listen through the headphones. You put the headphones back on and listen for any sounds. The remote mic is picking up a very slight noise, like a crackle of static. You can almost make out something else beneath it. Increase the volume. Smooth. You boost the volume until the sound becomes more distinct. What sounds like a voice rattling and wheezing comes through. 
pushed down. No, uh sorry, no way. Did you really just hear that? For the sake of both of our sins, I assume your ears were playing tricks on you. Our Haley was, for that matter, but she did look pretty far from the mic. There's no way, right? There's no possible way that she just heard a ghost. Yeah, definitely not. It probably was Zeke, to be honest, trying to get her out the, the job and stuff like that. Y'all know how Y'all know how I be with you know what I'm saying? Y'all know how I be. Anyways, on to the Carmen date. That was anticlimactic. We don't even know what happened with the girl or what happened, you know, really. But maybe we'll unlock her after the event fully ends. Because it's ended already, but, like, after it finalizes and stuff. Because I was still able to play it and finish it off. So, who knows? I guess we'll see. Anyways, on to the next Carmen date. Sweet Tooth. A stranger joins you for a coffee and a cryptic conversation. It's been a few weeks since the warehouse raid where you posed as crime boss Lucas Hall. As such, it's also been a few weeks since you and Carmen celebrated in her apartment. Well, the two of you have kept in touch since, Carmen has been too busy to meet up. You're nursing on some coffee at a sleepy cafe when you decide to text her. Still busy with work? It takes some time for Carmen to respond. Yeah, sorry. Talk later. XOXO. Having finished your coffee, you decide to purchase a lemon square as a treat. As you go to rise from your seat, a man places a plate on your table. Here you go, sir. Your pastry. He then sits opposite you. You pause, baffled, and slowly sink back into your chair. Thanks, I guess. You're very welcome. The man makes no move to leave his seat and watches you intently. His eyes occasionally flicker to the dish he's set in front of you. There's what appears to be a raspberry filled danish on the plate. I wanted something else. The man's brows furrow. But last week you said you wanted raspberry. This is your first time visiting this cafe or meeting this man. Well, now I want a lemon square. Lemon. Okay, I'll get right on that. The man pulls out his phone and starts typing. After a few moments of this, he pockets the phone again. Would you like coffee with that? What about my lemon square? I'll take some coffee. Gotcha. Coffee it is. You watch as he begins typing on his phone again. The more you look at him, the more he seems familiar to you. But from where? How many sugars? Two, please. Understood, boss. I'll tell the sugar to get ready. The man begins to type again. You take the opportunity to scrutinize his face. He does seem awfully familiar, and he called you boss. That's when he clicks. He was one of the mug shots Carmen showed you. Something the matter, boss? He stopped typing and is watching you with concern. Nope, nothing at all. Okay, then. The man stands up and dusts off his jacket. Enjoy the pastry, boss. I'll let you know when your order is ready. He steps outside, giving you some space to think. You've been mistaken for Lucas Hall all over again, this time by an accomplice of his. You're deliberate, deliberating about whether to eat the Danish when they're shouting from outside. Freeze. Don't move. Rush outside. You abandon the pastry at your table and run outside to see what's going on. Officer Young has Hall's accomplice pinned and is in the process of cuffing him. You have the right to a lawyer during questioning. If you cannot afford a lawyer, he notices you and stops in the middle of reciting the Miranda warning. Holy sh... Uh, stay right there, Hall. Just let me wrap this up first. Then I'll come arrest you too, I promise. It's Kev. I'm not Hall. I'm not home, huh? Is this some sort of new brainwashing tactic you're trying out? Mason squints at you and then breaks into a smile. Oh, hey, Kev, how's your shaking? You know, the usual. Cool, cool, don't mind me, I'm just arresting this guy. The man on the ground cranes his neck to look at you. Kev, you mean you're... Oops, probably shouldn't have used your name there. You think? Yeah, that's my bad. Mason hauls the accomplice up to his feet and walks him to his police cruiser. The man stares at you as he's loaded into the back seat. Look. Just like him. Mason shuts the door and returns to you. Good news is he won't have a chance to tell all his little criminal buddies. He's headed straight to the station for questioning. Where's Officer Ramos? How I'm missing your newfound lady friend, are we? I had a feeling something happened between you after you left the bar together. Which, by the way, not cool. You totally abandoned me. You were with a friend. Yeah, but I was coming back. Mason slaps your shoulder good-naturedly. Haha, <laughs> no worries. I'm just busting your balls. Metaphorically, I mean. Carmen has been super cagey about you lately, but I see her texting you all the time. So, do you have any hot gossip to share with your old Paul? Now probably isn't the best time to swap gossip, Mason. Right, right. What I'm hearing is that you totally banged. Rolled in the hay. Did the horizontal tango. You get the idea. Kind of weird, given you look just like the criminal she's hunting. But who am I to judge? We've all got our weird fetishes, or whatever. Another cruiser pulls up outside the cafe. Carmen steps out and strides purposely towards you. You know, the thing about weird fetishes, I actually don't have any, bro. Like, I'm, 
I'm not into no feet. I don't want to fucking cut you or none of that. I don't want to do none of that, bro. <laughs> I'm not into nothing weird, bro. I don't think. Nah, I don't think so. Karma steps out and strides purposely towards you. Hey, Karm, we definitely weren't talking about you. Sure you weren't. Where's the target, young? Mason gestures towards the police vehicle. Then why haven't you taken him to the station yet? Good question. Hey, whose side are you on, Mason? Yes, ma'am. Right away, ma'am. Catch you later, Kev. Use protection. He gets into his cruise and drives off before Carmen can chastise him further. She sighs in annoyance, then turns to you. Her gaze softens. Hey. Hey, yourself. Sorry, I've been so busy. The downside to having all these new leads is... Well, actually having to pursue them. We have a whole batch of new perps to question. Shrimp from the warehouse, the two accomplices from the fishy Fred's bus, and paperwork on top of that. It hasn't left me with much time to socialize. That's okay, you're here now. I am, but I don't know for how long. We're here today on the leave from one of the guys in our custody. He said that Hall meets one of his goons, Raph, here every Thursday. Apparently, they use a coded conversation to plan their heist. Oh, so that's what that was. What do you mean? Wait, actually, why are you here in the first place? Did something happen? You ran Carmen through this strange conversation you had with Raph, and you just happened to be at the right cafe? That's an insane coincidence. It's also an extremely dangerous one. If something had gone wrong, it's okay, I promise. I know, but still, you got really lucky here, Kev. It looks like Hall was a no-show to his own heist planning, so Raph mistook you for him. If Hall had actually shown up, you would have been in serious danger. I wonder why he didn't. That'll have to be a mystery for another day. First, I want to crack that code Raph was losing with you. Carmen absentmindedly fiddles with her badge as she thinks out loud. The raspberry danish must have represented something important, as it was the first step. Maybe, maybe it detonates the target, the side of the next hit, denotes the target. Hmm, even if I'm right, raspberry danish doesn't give us a lot to go on. A pastry house? That seems a little obvious, don't you think? Besides, Hall's crew is more of the bank robber type. I wish we all had to worry about... I wish all we had to worry about was them robbing a bakery for pastries. What about the coffee and sugar? No clue about the coffee. That could be just about anything, really. The sugar, from what you told me about Raph's word choices, I have a theory. I think packets of sugar may denote how many crew members Hall wants on the job. Carmen makes a dismissive gesture. But who knows, this seems like an unnecessarily complex way to plan something. You would think they just meet in a sewer or something, less public. But that's Hall for you. He's maddeningly arrogant. There's something else you should know, too. There is what's up. The guy overheard my name. Shit, really? That's not good. I know I sent you head first into a warehouse presumably filled with criminals, but I still prefer that you know that you not be in Hall's sight. Carmen nervously jumped her fingers on her belt buckle. Ralph was taken away before he had a chance to spread the word, so it should be fine. Nonetheless, I think I should bring you home just to minimize any chance of trouble. I'd appreciate a lift. It's my pleasure. Hop in, Tiger. Smooth. You join Carmen and her police cruiser taking a passenger seat. As you fasten your seatbelt, you notice a woman watching you from an outdoor cafe table. She's wearing sunglasses and a distinctive Bantu knot hairstyle. She's eating the Danish. You're only able to get a brief, brief look at her before Carmen drives off. That marks the second time now that someone has thought you're this Lucas character. I'm with Carmen this one. You're lucky she didn't hit the fan here. What kind of criminal uses a pastry-based code? Hall must be some kind of weirdo. Though I'm more interested in that lady with the funky hair. Why was she watching you? Maybe she thought you were handsome, or maybe she's just your average pastry thief. Nah, she connected, bro. I'm finna get in trouble. That's why you gotta watch out who you mess with, fellas. But I ain't gonna lie, Carmen. You, you look decent, shorty. Rich man, six figure. That's my type. If you know what I'm saying, boys. <laughs> Anyways, though, that'll be this video. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any other awesome content I bring you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really, truly do appreciate the support in all these videos. But with all that being said, boys, that is all I have for today. I hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out. Man, I need to start uploading more, honestly, like for real.